This video is designed to expand your rigging toolkit. You will learn how to improve your character's deformations using weight painting. This is a major obstacle for many people, but I'll show you a reliable workflow that works every time. And you'll get to know a set of tools to organize your rig and make it look more professional. The best part is these are simple techniques that you can learn in a couple of minutes each and use right away. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I'll share more about them later on, but now let's start off with a couple of important weight painting tips. The first set of tips will be in the weight painting category. Weights are the connection between your mesh and your bones. So what if your character was a little bit more complex and consists of multiple objects? That is actually not a huge problem. Here I have a head model. I'll place it on my character's head, then select all meshes, shift select the armature, press Ctrl P, choose automatic weights as before, go to pose mode, and all of your meshes should move with the rig. Just for your information, sometimes automatic weights fails, especially with complex characters. You will get a warning at the bottom of the interface, which you may miss, and your character will not move with the rig. But keep following the course and you will learn how to handle any weight painting situation. Next we'll go into custom weight painting, which can help you improve the character deformations. And I'm going to give you the workflow and settings that I always use. They work like a charm. I'll go to object mode. Have your armature selected. Shift and select the mesh that you want to weight paint and go to weight paint mode. In the end panel, switch your brush to add. If using a slightly new version of Blender, your brushes will look like this and there is no add brush. But that's okay. These brushes here are just quick presets. So just switch blend to add here, and then you can keep following the tutorial. The rest of the settings will be the same. Set strength to about 0.2. Under options, enable auto normalize. Auto normalize is probably the most important option in weight paint. Always have it on. You'll learn more about that in level 2 and 3 of the course. For now, suffice it to say that this option will keep your weights nice and clean. Under Symmetry, if your character is completely symmetrical, you can enable Mirror Vertex Groups and the X option. If your character is not completely symmetrical, you should disable these options and you'll have to paint on both sides individually. My character is symmetrical, so I will enable these options. To start painting, Alt and click, or you can Control, Shift and click on a bone, and that will select it and enable the vertex group. Now you can rotate and move this bone, and if you click on the mesh, that will affect the weights. By clicking, I'm adding weights. If I Control and click, I can subtract weights. Usually the arm affects too much of the body, so I can Control click on the body, or I can Alt and click on the body bone and paint positive weights by just clicking, and that will remove weights from the arm. So the body is one area that always gets messed up. Another one is the face. You'll see that the chin is kind of yellowish. And when I rotate the head, it doesn't quite follow the bone, so I just have to click on it, and it will deform better. And finally, you can shift and click to smooth weights. Smoothing is an important technique and it can help improve the areas where the influences of two bones overlap, such as the arm and the shoulder. These are not just the basics of weight painting, but this is how I actually weight paint most of the time. People seem to think that there are advanced and secret weight painting techniques. And sure, you'll learn more in level 2 and 3 of the course. But just memorize or write down the settings and shortcuts I shared in this video and you will have learned about 80% of weight painting. Next we'll go into a couple of simple tricks you can use to improve your rig. First we are going to create a root bone. A root is a bone that moves the entire rig and it is useful in various ways. For example, when setting the initial position of your rig, or to make your character walk in space. We will do just that in an animation exercise which is coming very soon. I'll go to edit mode, 
If the cursor is not at the center, press Shift S, cursor to world origin, press Shift A to add a new bone, F2 and name this bone root, grab its tail and push it down a bit to make it smaller. What we need to do now is parent any bones that are not parented to other bones to the root. In our simple rig, that is just the first spine bone and the two IK bones. I'll select them all, then shift select the root, press Ctrl P and choose keep offset. Now in pose mode, this bone should move the entire character. Something else you can learn quickly is that some bones are supposed to deform the character and some aren't. In our simple rig, the non-deforming bones are the root, the IK targets and the IK poles. So if we go to the bone tab, there is a deform option and we have to untick it for these bones. But first, let's see why we are doing this. For example, if I rotate the foot, you'll see that the heel does not rotate with it. That is because the heel is affected by the IK target. If I select the shin and go to my constraints, I can disable the IK constraint for a second by clicking on this eye icon. And now if I move the IK target, you'll see how it deforms the heel. To prevent this, first go to the bone tab and disable the form for all of these bones. So the IK targets, the root and the IK poles. And finally, go to object mode, select your mesh or meshes, shift select the armature last, press Ctrl P and choose automatic weights, which will recalculate the automatic weights. Now in pose mode, moving the target does not deform the character. This is perfect. So I have to select the shin and re-enable my IK constraint. I hope you're enjoying rigging isn't scary. We are just getting started. Next, we'll dive into another fundamental rigging tool, bone shapes. Throughout the course, you'll hear me talk about fundamentals again and again. And I take that very seriously myself. Lately, I've been brushing up my math fundamentals using Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring this part of the course. Brilliant is a learning app that helps you get smarter every day with thousands of lessons in math, science, coding, and more. Their approach is all about learning by doing. You're not just watching videos, you're solving problems and improving your skills step by step. So I've been using Brilliant to strengthen my math fundamentals in the hopes that it will help me pick up some advanced Blender skills such as geometry nodes. What I enjoy most is the gamification of the learning experience, which makes you want to keep learning. That is similar to playing a game, but rather than wasting your time, you are developing a daily learning habit and building up your problem solving skills. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash cgdive or by clicking the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Again, I would like to thank Brilliant for their support, which made it possible to release this extensive rigging course for free. Now let's learn about bone shapes. This rig already works, but the bones are constantly visible through the mesh. Again, this is because we enabled in front in the armature tab. So you can disable it and you can still select the bones, but they can be hard to select. So we can use something called bone shapes. If you go to the bone tab, viewport display, and you'll see custom object. Let's go to object mode, press shift A, mesh, and create a circle. And press F2 and name it bone shape circle. I can place it into a new collection and I can even hide the collection now. Go back to my rig, enable in front for now, then go back to the bone tab, pose mode, select any of the bones and set the custom shape to bone shape circle. So now our bone looks like a circle, but it will behave exactly as before. I want the circle flat on the ground, so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. I can make it a little bit bigger. That is just a visual thing. And now I have a shape that is much easier to select. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply this circle to all of my bones. You can have any shapes you like, but I just want to show you that just adding circles makes things so much nicer. 
So for example, I'll go to the thigh, give it the bone shape circle, rotate it as needed, scale it down. I could also move it on the Y axis to position it exactly as I want. And I'll repeat this process for the left side of the character and the spine. A little trick you can do is select all bones that you want to apply the same shape to, then select another bone that already has this shape, then go to custom object, right click and choose copy to select it. Then you can right click on the rotation for example and choose copy all to select it and that will orient all bones the same way. Now I didn't do the right side because I can go to edit mode, select all of the left side bones, right click and choose symmetrize, go to pose mode and it's all set for me. Now I can go to the armature tab and disable in front and you'll see that I can still see my bones, but they don't occlude the character. Let me give shapes to the pulse as well. Something else that you can do here in the bone tab is set bone colors. So I'll select all spine bones, the neck bone, and the head bone, and give them the yellow color for pose bone color. And if I click this button, it will be applied to all selected bones. I'll then select all bones on the left side. And give them the red color and again paste this to all selected bones. And then all bones on the right side. Give them a blue color and copy that. For the root, I'm going to set a special purple color. And I'm going to make a couple of simple tweaks to make my bones even easier to see. Now, there are a couple of bones that are never animated. The IK controls the whole leg, so I can select these leg bones. And I want to move them to a separate bone collection. First, let's go to the armature tab to see exactly what will happen. Here you can see the new bone collections which were introduced in Blender 4. So if I press M, I can move these bones to a new collection. I'll call it hidden or something like that. Click create and a new collection was created and the leg bones were moved to it. So if I press this eye icon to disable the visibility, the bones will become invisible. Keep in mind that they're still there, they are just hidden. So my rig will still work without unnecessary bones getting in the way. In just 10 minutes, we learned weight painting and made our rig much easier to use, not too shabby. You are almost at the finish line, so keep going. As a big finale in level 1 of the course, we are going to have a special rigging challenge. But before that, let's talk about animation. Even if you want to specialize in rigging, you have to know some animation fundamentals. So in the next video, we'll create a walk cycle for this guy. And along the way, you will learn about frames, keyframes and other animation concepts. Let's move on.